the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay, with a fe lay, lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I might preach there also. For that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's gospel picks up in the middle of what has already been a long day for Jesus. The verses leading up to today's gospel tell us that Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath. He began teaching on the reading of the day, when a demon-possessed man interrupted him. Jesus then drove the demon from the man with the authority of his word. Now, as was the custom of that time and place, one of the members invited the teacher to a meal at his home. That's how Jesus came to be in the home of Simon. This is the same Simon, whom Jesus had already called to be one of his disciples. Later on, Jesus would give Simon the nickname Peter. Well, when they arrived at the home, they expressed their sadness that one member of the household wasn't able to meet with them. They quickly informed Jesus that Simon's mother-in-law was bedridden with a fever and couldn't be with them. Well, Jesus went to the woman and took her by the hand, and the fever left her. She stood up, and she began to serve the meal. Jesus' healing was immediate and complete. The woman didn't even need a period of recuperation after she recovered from the fever. She was healthy enough to serve the meal. Well, Capernaum isn't that big of a town. The word got out. Jesus had driven a demon out of the man in the synagogue and then had gone to Simon's house and healed his mother-in-law. News like that travels fast. As soon as the sun went down and the Sabbath was over, the area around Simon's house filled up with people who wanted healing. Mark describes it this way. He said, the whole city was gathered together at the door. Well, Jesus provided relief for those who came. He healed many who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. Given that the healing didn't start until sundown, it's reasonable to assume that the ministry to these people lasted late into the night. The next day promised to be even busier with healing and teaching. Well, the only thing is that when the next day came, they couldn't find Jesus. Jesus was gone. Well, Mark tells us where Jesus went. Rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Instead of making himself available to all the people who needed him, he was off having quiet time in prayer. Now, whenever a gospel account tells us that Jesus went off and prayed by himself like this, we should stop and think. You see, the gospel accounts to often tell us that Jesus went off to pray like this when he was under severe temptation. Perhaps the best example of this was in the Garden of Gethsemane, where the gospel recorders 
writers recorded the very prayer that Jesus prayed. Abba, Father, all things are possible for You. Remove this cup from Me. Yet not what I will, but what You will. (coughs) This was a time of temptation to abandon His mission by avoiding the cross. He could have walked away from it all. The beatings, the shame, the crucifixion, the death, everything involved. Well, another example of this is after the feeding of the 5,000. After he had taken leave of them, he went up on a mountain to pray. He prayed because the 5,000 wanted to make him king so that he could feed them free food every day. Now, he could have been their king. He could have been popular. He could have had a lot of followers. But he didn't. The temptation in today's Gospel was for Jesus to continue his healing ministry in Capernaum indefinitely. There were great flocks of people coming to him. He was popular. He had the power to recreate a small version of the Garden of Eden right there in Capernaum. Simon would have been very happy to have converted his home into a medical clinic, and Jesus could have lived out there a long time and had a long, happy life of healing the people in Capernaum. Maybe even he'd get married. He could settle down. He could start a family. There didn't have to be any torture or crucifixion. Jesus could have set up shop as the popular healing rabbi of Capernaum. But that's not what he came into this world to do. He didn't leave his throne above to take on human flesh in order to become popular or famous or wealthy or powerful or anything like that. Instead, he came to overcome sin, death, and the power of the devil. He came to open heaven's gates to us. He came to do his Father's will, to bring eternal life, to all people. Jesus went to the empty places, away from the people. That's where he confronted his most severe temptations, away from the crowds, but not alone, for he prayed to God, the Father in heaven. Jesus never gave in to temptation. He remained faithful to his mission. He remained obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He carried the entire burden of the world's sin to a hill outside of Jerusalem. There he allowed a crucifixion squad to nail him to a cross. There he hung with all of our sins, our burdens, our hurts, bearing down on him. It's a place of punishment. It's our punishment that he endures. It's a place of agony and suffering. A place of death. A place where even God the Father in heaven abandons him to the evils of hell. Because Jesus never gave in to temptation. He could cry out in triumph just before he died and say, it is finished. Yet this wasn't the end of our faithful Savior. The grave couldn't hold him. For out of a desolate tomb, a grave, a place of death, Jesus rose from the dead. Not even death could hold him. He had defeated Satan and death on the cross. And now he lives forevermore, celebrating the successful completion of his mission. When Jesus went missing, Simon got together a search party and they went looking for Jesus. Simon and those who were with him searched for him and they found him. And they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. They wanted Jesus to come back and continue healing people. But Jesus had other ideas. He said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. When the time was right, Jesus would go up to Jerusalem in order to give himself up as a sacrifice on the cross. Until that time, the main purpose of his ministry was preaching. 
the healing and the other miracles were a sign of his authority, but they weren't the main mission. The healing and other miracles were there to serve the main mission of preaching. You see, as marvelous as it was that Jesus went about healing people, it's his preaching that delivers the kingdom of God to them. Jesus could go about giving away free food, healing the sick, even raising the dead. None of this would bring the kingdom of God to one soul. Instead, the Holy Spirit has promised to work through the Word of God, through preaching. It's as the Holy Spirit said through the Apostle Paul, faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the Word of Christ. Our text ends with these words. Jesus went throughout all of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. With his preaching, he was bringing forgiveness, life, and salvation to those people. Now, almost 2,000 years after the events of today's gospel, Jesus still gives forgiveness, life, and salvation through preaching. Even though Jesus has long ago ascended to heaven, his preaching continues. Before he ascended into heaven, he appeared before the disciples and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Our Lord Jesus continues to bless us with good health, just as he did in Capernaum. Only now he gives us medical facilities to alleviate our pain and suffering. He gives us wealth and luxury that even kings couldn't imagine in ancient days. Jesus is our shield and protection as we live day by day. He has answered our prayers, and we need to thank him for those blessings. But what a sad thing it would be if it stopped there. We have 2,000 years of church history and teachings to help us see what Jesus came to do. We have the Bible to read and to study, as over and over again, it points us to the cross and Jesus' resurrection. We have Bible classes to teach us why Jesus gave his life for us. We have artwork and jewelry that take us to the cross. Look around. Our worship services lead us to repent of our sins and confess our faith in Christ. You see, Jesus still gives the forgiveness that leads to eternal life. He has opened heaven's gates. We already have eternal life, even if we only see it dimly. We have all this because Jesus didn't give in to temptation, but he remained faithful to his mission. His mission to the cross to take away all of our sins. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.